Welcome to this sleep story from Abide, a comforting Bible meditation to help you relax and fall asleep. I am Nene Woko. Tonight's story, Healed by Jesus, takes us to a life-changing moment in time as a suffering woman takes a bold step of faith and reaches for the only one who can heal her. But before we get into the scriptures, please get settled into bed and take a few deep breaths to help you relax. Release everything that is on your mind. Clear your thoughts of all distractions by focusing only on Jesus. Whisper his name. Invite the Lord to be with you as you keep your mind fixed on him. Ask for him to fill the room with his peace and his presence. Breathe in and release your breath slowly. Be assured tonight that Jesus loves you, even though you've probably heard that phrase many times. It is a powerful truth you can count on. Jesus loves you. He knows your name. Amidst all the people in the world, he knows exactly what you need. Inhale deeply and exhale completely. Pull the soft covers around you and lie very still for a moment. Think only of the gentle Savior who loves you and surrounds you with his peace. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. Please, pray with me. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus, I pray over this beloved listener tonight. With each breath they take, I ask you to fill them with your peace. Lord, each of us needs your tender, healing touch. Just as the woman bravely reached out and touched the hem of your robe, so we reach out to receive healing from you tonight. Mind, heart, body, and soul, please heal every broken place. Lord, as this Dear child, hears your words of comfort tonight. Let your spirit flow through them, reminding them of your truth. Let them know they are deeply loved by you. As they fall asleep, I pray that your presence will guard them all through the night. And when they wake, I pray that they will be fully renewed, ready to face the day, complete, whole, healthy, and secure. I ask for these things in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Before we get into our sleep story, take one more deep breath in and release it as slowly as you can. Relax every muscle from head to toe. 
Feel the tension leaving your body. God is with you. Feel his comforting presence. Rest in his love and peace. Oh, how he cares for you. Now we turn to the shores of Galilee. As a multitude of people wait for Jesus, he steps out of the boat and is welcomed by them. They gather around him, pressing in on every side, desperate to get close to him. A woman is in the crowd, a dear woman who has been bleeding for twelve long years. Can you imagine? She has suffered for so long without relief. She has spent her life savings on doctors and treatments, hoping something will work. She has been isolated and outcast as a woman who is unclean. By every standard of the Jewish law, she should not be there this day. However, she has nowhere else to go. She is desperate to find healing, and she knows there is one who can make her whole. Perhaps you have felt unclean or isolated. Maybe you don't believe you should receive anything from God. If so, please release those thoughts to the Savior tonight. He has washed away your guilt and shame. He has torn the veil so that you can enter the Holy of Holies he invites you to come boldly to the throne of grace. Gracious God, please release this beloved listener of all doubt tonight. As they come before you, remove any obstacle that stands in their way. Restore their faith in you, leading them to your throne fully surrendered to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Even though the woman was deemed unclean by the Jewish law, the law of love prevailed that day. Her faith in Jesus took her to Galilee, despite the label others had placed on her, and in faith, she waited for just the right time to touch the hem of his robe. Her story is recorded in Luke chapter 8, verses 43 and 44. Now a woman having a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. Immediately she was healed. With one slight touch, she received the power of Jesus, mighty to heal. You see, as Jesus the great physician, walked past. She knew without a doubt that he was able to heal. He is able. As Ephesians 3.20 says, He is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. According to his power, that is at work within us. Rest in that 
comforting truth tonight. Gracious God, healer, and friend, we come humbly before you, thanking you for being with us. As this beloved person seeks you tonight, help them to find your grace and peace. Remind them that they are created to seek you, reach for you, and find you, for you are not far from them. I pray for this dear person to be assured of the healing power of your presence. I ask, Lord, that you heal every affliction every illness, and every issue they might have. In the mighty name of Jesus, and by the power of your Spirit, please move through this person's body to bring full healing and restoration. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. After the woman touched the hem of Jesus' robe, he stopped and asked, Who touched me? None of his disciples could answer him. In fact, they questioned the Lord by saying, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and do you say, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Jesus already knew who the woman was, yet he stopped to ask who had touched him. He wanted her to come forward in faith. Jesus wants you to come to him in faith as well. He invites you to ask of him. In John chapter 14, Jesus said, Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. This heart Lord, needs your cleansing power. This mind, Lord, needs your thoughts of praise. This body, Lord, needs your healing touch. This soul, Lord, needs your hands to raise. Be still before the Lord tonight, resting in His love towards you. Trust Him to know exactly what you need. Trust Him to heal you. When the woman saw that she was not hidden from Jesus, she came trembling and falling down before Him, she declared in the presence of all the people why she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Then Jesus said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Hear Jesus' words again. Be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your faith, as small as a tiny mustard seed, is enough. Believe that Jesus is mighty to heal. From every sickness and pain, he is more than able to make you well. Do not give up. Keep pressing in. 
keep taking hold of the hem of his garment, believing he can heal you. Lord Jesus, I pray for this beloved person tonight, hopeful for your hand of healing over their infirmities. Please, Lord, renew their hope in you. Never let them doubt that you are able to heal. Give them strength, comfort, and direction as they walk in faithfulness to you. I ask that you work through their body, through every fiber of their being, to heal and restore them to health. No matter what, Lord, I pray that this child will give you all the glory, honor, and praise. I pray that they will be a living testimony of what you've done for them. Be with them, Lord. Be their comfort and their peace. I pray these things in your holy name. Amen. As this day now comes to a close, this story is written to help you remember God's kindness and rest in His promises as you drift off to sleep. I'm Brian Stivale. Rest peacefully tonight, knowing that Jesus, your beloved Savior and Rescuer, has the power to calm the storm, not just in the sea, but also in your own life. Preparation for Sleep Jesus calms the storms. He calmed actual storms on the sea with his disciples, and in the same way, he calms the storms that come to you in life. Tonight, let the kindness of Jesus come to you in whatever challenge you may be facing. Let His Holy Spirit comfort you and bring you peace. Before we begin our story, take a moment to get comfortable as you prepare to fall asleep. Close your eyes and take a slow, deep breath. Hold your breath for a brief moment before slowly exhaling. Do this once more, breathing slowly and letting the peace of God fill your mind. Let the anxiety of your day disappear as you prepare to rest soundly in truth that comes from God's Word. Adjust your shoulders to lay comfortably in your bed and ensure any distractions have been released from your mind. Tomorrow will come, but now it is the time for rest. Father God, thank you for the gift of peace that you have granted to your beloved. Tonight, as they lay down to sleep, may they truly experience your peace that passes all understanding over the worries and concerns currently plaguing their heart. We look to you and find rest in your spirit. We look to you and find hope in the cross. And we look to you, Jesus, and find calm in our storm. Help us to see you more clearly. In your name I pray. 
Amen. With that, let's get on with our story. In Mark chapter 4, we can find a story of Jesus and his disciples stuck on a boat in a horrible storm. It wasn't looking good. The wind was unruly. The outcome, uncertain. Wild wind and rocking waves. The disciples weren't sure what to do. They suddenly looked around, and it occurred to them that someone was missing. It was Jesus. And then they found him, asleep, in the middle of the worst storm they had known. It must have been heartbreaking for his friends. And as they stirred him, they asked, Teacher, do you not care? He was awake right away, and with power and authority, he spoke to the sea and said, Be still. Instantly, the storm ceased. Imagine a peaceful day at sea. You arrive at the dock after a short drive, and right away you see the familiar faces of the friends you will be joining. Towels and sunscreen in hand, you load onto the boat and slowly head out to sea, and you hear the whisper of God over your heart. Be still. You reach your hand over the edge of the boat, dipping your fingers in the cool water. The sun is bright, warm upon your skin. The bright blue sky seems endless, not a single cloud in sight. You can see dozens of birds between you and the horizon and hearing their chirps brings a sweet smile to your face. It is simple, peaceful, calm. Look around you at the endless blue, the rippling waves of the sea around you, the mist that comes up off the water. Note the contrast of the blue water against the blue sky. The same color, yet so wonderfully different. And you hear the whisper of God. Be still. Feel the wind blow against your face as the boat cruises across open water. Take a deep breath of contentment, knowing you are safe. There is nothing to fear on a peaceful day. There is a calm that allows you to rest and to enjoy. Anxieties are lifted. Fear has evaporated. When Jesus is present in the boat, there is peace. And when Jesus is present in your life, there is The way he calms the storms on the sea is simply a picture of what he aims to do in your own life and heart. Hear the whisper of God. Be still. As he invites you to shift from the stormy uncertainties to the peaceful 
simplicity of a day at sea with the ones you love. This peace that comes from Jesus comes with familiarity of his voice. Jesus likened it to the familiarity of sheep who would instantly recognize the voice of their shepherd. Imagine you are at a Saturday morning farmer's market, wandering from booth to booth. You walk up to one where you carefully pick out the perfect veggies. The earthy, fresh smells emanate from the table, drawing you in. Your eyes dance across the table as you admire the myriad of colors that came from the earth. The dazzling array of peppers, green, orange, yellow, and red, set the stage for all the rest. The dark green crowns of the broccoli next to the bright, right red of the tomatoes. There is the deep purple of the eggplant, nestled by the rich orange of the carrots. As you are scanning the table, your attention is roused by a familiar voice. You look up to see your lifelong friend at the other end of the table. You're startled with delight and hurry toward your friend. Your response came with no hesitation. You heard the voice, and you ran. The familiarity of the voice brings comfort, affection, and trust. When Jesus tells the people the story of the sheep, and the shepherd they followed so effortlessly, he told them, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Imagine the voice of Jesus speaking to you in the midst of your present worries and concerns. Be still. Feel the support of his arm around your shoulder, the gentle way he wipes away your tears. Feel the comfort of his embrace present with you in the storm, bringing peace where you need it most. Be still. The comfort of a God who is present with you in the storm is evidenced in the nearness of a familiar God who calls you by name. He is the same God who was present on the boat. And though he may have seemed disconnected or disinterested, he was surely not. He was there. He cared deeply for his friends on the boat. And he was faithful to protect them. So he is with you. He is present. He is connected. He is interested in you. And he cares deeply about you as you weather the storms of life. Listen closely for his voice and recognize him when he whispers, be still. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for speaking peace over the storms in my life. May the storms I face always cause me to look to you with trust and confidence and never to question your goodness or your grace. I look to you as my rescuer, my hope, and my salvation. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Find rest in the character of Jesus to be with you in the storm and to call on him in your moments of greatest need. Remember that you are not alone, not in the storms you face with fear and uncertainty, and neither in the joys you delight in with joy and celebration. Your Lord, King Jesus, is with you every step of the way. And, as Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16, May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, in every way. Rest well tonight in God's loving arms, knowing that he calms your storms. Now, imagine yourself sitting on a very busy downtown street. You're blind, so you can't see what's going on around you. But the crowd is overwhelming. Your voice cannot be heard. There are so many people walking on the sidewalk that you're constantly being bumped into. The sounds, the smells, the dust, the clamor. Every day, it's the same. You keep asking and begging for someone, anyone, to give you just a little bit of money so you can eat. You hear no friendly words. You feel no friendly touch. In fact, you can hear some talking about you, unkindly. Maybe thinking because that you can't see, you can't hear. All of a sudden, you hear someone shout, There he is! Everybody immediately starts to surge toward this individual. You have no idea who they are all wanting to see. You try and ask people who is there, but no one answers you. Then you hear someone say, There's Jesus! You've heard of this man. His amazing teaching, his miracles. Oh, his miracles! The thought flits through your mind that maybe Jesus could help you. Oh, he's helped so many others. But then reality sets in and the hope drains from you. You've been tossed aside so many times. Why would Jesus even pay any attention to you? You just sit there, try to listen to what's going on. 
Just then, you hear someone call out to you. Did you hear that right? Did someone say your name? And then, and then you hear it again. Softer. Closer. Gentler. Not since your father spoke to you as a child have you heard your name said in that way. So, so lovingly. All other noise has stopped. It's as if you're in a cave. No one around you moves or speaks. It's Jesus. You don't know how you know, but you know. It's Jesus. And he has found you. You feel his hand on your forehead. You you hear his gentle voice. And all of a sudden the darkness that has always enveloped you starts to grow thinner. Light begins to break through. And your eyes begin to focus. And you find yourself looking directly into Jesus' eyes. And Jesus is looking directly at you. And you feel more love coming from Him than you have ever felt in your entire life. Imagine being blind your whole life and then miraculously being healed. Imagine being overlooked, ridiculed, and then suddenly loved beyond your wildest imagination. Out of all the others on the street that day that he could have stopped for, Jesus chose you. Maybe you felt the way that the blind man felt. That people ignore you and you feel that you're not worthy of love. Maybe you've been suffering with an ailment and you feel that God has forgotten you. But the truth is this. You are worth everything in the eyes of Jesus. And He wants what is best for you. Listen to John 3 1 from the Amplified Bible. See what an incredible quality of love the Father has shown to us. That we would be permitted to be named and called and counted the children of God. And so we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. God calls us His children so that we can get a glimpse, an idea, of what our relationship with Him should be. Truth is, there's no way we can totally grasp just how much He loves each of us. It's too vast and wide. It's immeasurable, unchanging, never-ending. Did you hear that? Never ending. He will always love you. We are all so precious to Him. Webster's Dictionary defines the word precious as something of great value, not to be wasted or treated carelessly. 
That's how God views you. You have value. You are not to be wasted or treated carelessly. Maybe you feel like you've done so many wrong things in your life that God doesn't love you. That couldn't be more wrong. God loves you so much that He sent His Son Jesus to die for you. Perhaps you've seen the verse John 3.16 on a sign in the end zone of a football game along the side of the road, on a billboard. But let's take a closer look at that verse in the New Living Translation. For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. God did that for everyone. Meaning no matter what you've done in your life, God still loves you so much that He sent His Son to die for you. You're precious to Him. Jesus loved telling stories. In Luke 15, 11-32, in the New Living Translation, He tells the story of the prodigal son to demonstrate God's love for us. Even when you mess up in sin and don't feel worthy of God's love, this story explains how God views you. Listen to this parable. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money and wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him, and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare. And here I am, dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to his servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and is now returned to life. 
He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, All these years I've slaved for you, and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you've always stayed with me, and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day, for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. God is telling you right now that He loves you. You are so precious to Him. No matter how much you've sinned, God is still waiting for you to come back to Him. Now, sleep in confidence, knowing that you are loved and are precious to God. Let's pray. Oh, dear Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace and mercy. I ask now that you would come and comfort your child as they sleep tonight. May the Lord bless them and protect them. May the Lord smile on them and be gracious to them. May the Lord show you His favor and give you His peace. Amen. Now rest in His loving arms. Dear Father, you are holy, you are righteous, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the creator and sustainer of all life. Thank you for creating us and loving us. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, the nations tremble before you. Father, we only want what you want. 
conform us to your will. Teach us to be holy. Teach us to be righteous. Teach us to be more like you. Teach us to love the things of God and not the things of men. Father, we want to advance your kingdom and to live for you. May your will be done in our lives. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Father, we ask that you will give us what we need this week. I pray that this child of God will have peace and patience and sweet dreams all night as you protect them. I also ask that you will grant them great health. I ask that you will provide for their every need. We ask that you will forgive us our sins. Teach us to forgive like you forgive and to love like you love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, I ask that you will protect this child of God from temptation. I ask that you will guard them with your mighty power and your army of angels. Your word says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Give them a wonderful night's rest. Father God, you are the creator and the sustainer. You are worthy of worship. Thank you for loving us and protecting us. It's in Christ's name that I pray. Amen. Dear one, the Lord of heaven and earth is protecting you. He's watching over you. He wants to know you more. You have peace because you serve the God of peace. You can feel his presence right now because his Holy Spirit dwells within you. Let's pray. Father, Thank you for this child of God. Thank you for their heart for you. Thank you for this time to relax. Thank you for the gift of sleep. Father, I ask that you will grant them peace and patience. I ask that you will bless them with a wonderful night's sleep. I pray that they will wake up refreshed, ready to serve you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is protecting you. He's the God of Simon Peter and the Apostle Paul. He loves you, and he's watching over you. Rest in his peace. Abide in his presence you are loved our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Dear Father, you are holy. You are righteous. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are the creator and sustainer of all life. Thank you for creating us and loving us. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, the nations tremble before you. Father, we only want what you want. Conform us to your will. Teach us to be holy. Teach us to be righteous. Teach us to be more like you. Teach us to love the things of God and not the things of men. Father, we want to advance your kingdom and to live for you. May your will be done in our lives. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Father, we ask that you will give us what we need this week. I pray that this child of God will have peace and patience and sweet dreams all night as you protect them. I also ask that you will grant them great health. I ask that you will provide for their every need. We ask that you will forgive us our sins. Teach us to forgive like you forgive and to love like you love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father, I ask that you will protect this child of God from temptation. I ask that you will guard them with your mighty power and your army of angels. Your word says, In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Give them a wonderful night's rest. Father God, you are are the creator and the sustainer you are worthy of worship thank you for loving us and protecting us it's in christ's name that i pray amen dear one the lord of heaven and earth is protecting you he's watching over you he wants to know you more. You have peace because you serve the God of peace. You can feel his presence right now because his Holy Spirit dwells within you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this child of God. Thank you for their heart for you. Thank you for this time to relax. Thank you for the gift of sleep. Father, I ask that you will grant them peace and patience. I ask that you will bless them with a wonderful night's sleep. I pray that they will wake up refreshed, ready to serve you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is protecting you. He's the God of Simon Peter and the Apostle Paul. He loves you, and he's watching over you. Rest in his peace. Abide in his presence. You are loved.
As you lay down to sleep tonight, we want your spirit to find rest and peace by listening to stories that come from pictures and stories that we find in God's Word. Do you feel restless? Do you feel unsettled? Are you longing for peace? Tonight, you will hear words from the Apostle Paul that beckon your heart to find peace, rest, and comfort. You will be reminded that Christ has made a way for you to find everlasting peace. You will be invited to rest in that peace tonight as you sleep. As you lay down, find a comfortable position. No matter what this day held, it has come to a close, and God invites you to release it and enter into the blessed rest that He gives His beloved as you sleep. Let your shoulders relax. With your eyes closed, release any pressure that's tensing you up and prepare to sleep. Take a slow, deep breath, holding it for a moment before exhaling slowly. Take another deep breath. Let the pressures, weights, and uncertainties that you are worried about fall away tonight. Your Heavenly Father invites you to rest as you sleep. Father God, thank you for protecting your child through another day. As they lay down to sleep, I ask that you would lead them to the peace and rest that comes from knowing you and being in your presence. Be near to your child tonight, Jesus. Let the words that come from your holy scriptures lead them to sleep in peace and wake in joy. We look to you for our hope. You are our everlasting peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Children have the most wonderful imagination. When they play, their whole world transforms. To them, any item or location can morph in an instant, simply because the child's mind decided it was time to have an adventure. Maybe the days of careless play seem miles away from where you currently find yourself. Often children will play castle with kings and queens or maybe even a court jester. Their backyard transforms, and with all the power of a monarch, they rule over an imaginary world. Maybe you wish you could go back to the days where the only thing you had to worry about having enough time to play creatively in this way. It can be easy sometimes to wish that life were as simple as it was back then, when you could just imagine something and suddenly the world around you changed. Things are surely different now, but maybe the invitation remains to imagine and see the world around you change. What if God's invitation to you through his word, was even more profound than your wildest childlike imagination. That you could find something more than a temporary, whimsical escape from the world around you and find a more lasting mindset change. In his letters to the Colossian church, the Apostle Paul writes, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Imagine approaching the most majestic castle, 
you have seen it from a distance. But finally, you have the opportunity to experience whatever might be inside. You slowly walk up to the gate, only to find the guards have been expecting you. They open the massive brass gate, and you walk through. You're no longer on a normal sidewalk. The ground beneath you has changed to an intricate brick design. Feel the freedom of acceptance as you walk toward the front doors. Notice the array of flowers and the perfectly manicured bushes. Lean in to smell the roses. Admire the variety of blues, yellows, whites, and reds filling the flower bed. Walk closer to the front door, preparing to enter and finally see what's inside. As you reach the door, you encounter more guards, but they too seem to be expecting you. Notice the ornate design of the front doors, taller than any you've seen before. Open the door and walk through to find a still more majestic entry. Look up to see the height of the ceilings. Notice the extravagance of the staircases, one to the right and one to the left. You've entered a place with a monarch, a king or queen that rules over the space and all the space outside of it. But the ruler isn't what you imagined. It isn't a person. It's peace. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. For peace to rule means that peace leads the conversation. Peace initiates. Peace responds. Peace makes the decisions. Peace has the final word. Christ gives you the invitation to surrender to peace. Lay down your anger and let peace rule. Let go of your bitterness and let peace rule. Stop striving and let peace rule. You belong in a palace of peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. The invitation of Jesus is not simply to let peace have the final say. It is, through thankfulness, to let the word of Christ dwell among you richly. Letting peace have the final say changes what happens in the palace of your life. Letting the word of Christ dwell among you is to fill the room with truth-tellers and promise-keepers. To dwell is to remain, to live, to stay in a space. Run to the richness of the word of Christ, and you will find balm for your weary soul. You will find truth flowing from the heart of God. You will find the promises of Jesus spoken of old and preserved for us in the Holy Scriptures. Though we long for the goodness of God, most spaces are filled not with truth or truth-tellers. Instead of letting outside lesser voices have the loudest voice, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Wander deeper into the palace. Turn the corner to find another majestic great room. Admire the colors woven into the rug. Deep greens, gold, and soft reds. Smell the incense burning permeating every room. Look at the curtains, perfectly hung and pulled back to the side. Draw closer to the window and look outside at the luscious green grass and the bright blue sky. Imagine you turn the corner and find a grand piano positioned perfectly in the great room. Listen as the words of Christ that dwell among you turn to songs of blessing sung throughout the palace. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another. 
with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Walk back to the front room and wander up the stairs. Listen to the sound of your feet on the tile as you ascend the stairs. Wander into each and every room you find, each more elaborate than the last. Imagine you have filled these rooms with truth-tellers, truth dwelling among you, peace reigning around you, truth to guide you, peace to sustain you. This is the invitation of Christ. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. We are all longing for peace. We are looking for it in so many different places, desperate to see this peace reign over our families workplaces, relationships, and the world. We are longing for the truth of the Word of Christ to dwell among us. The beauty is found in the promise given to you as you walk with Jesus. Choose to lean on the peace that comes from Him. As you fall asleep tonight, and as you wake in the morning to begin a new day, choose peace. Remember the message of Jesus and let that dwell in your mind and heart instead. Heavenly Father, I ask again that your peace would permeate tonight as your beloved sleeps. You are our hope of peace in a broken and hurting world, and we look to you. Bless your child tonight. May your message dwell richly in them leading them to delight and rest in your promises. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Find peace tonight as you rest in the loving arms of the God who delights to bless you, care for you, and lead you. Sleep well tonight, and may you wake to know the Lord's love for you deeper and deeper. With your eyes closed, our journey tonight takes us to a beautiful forest. The pine trees tower above your head. The lingering rays of sunlight fade as the evening darkness takes over the light of day. Through the haze of the dusk sky, you see a cabin in the distance. A candle flickers through the windows. It seems strange that this cabin would be in such a secluded place. But you are tired. Could this be my place of rest for the evening? You ask yourself. As you approach the inviting quaint cabin in the woods. You notice the door is slightly open. A crooked sign hanging on an old rusty nail reads, Come in. Make yourself at home. Even though the sign says you are welcome, you hesitate. 
but you slowly push open the worn wooden door to peek in. As you look into the cabin, Jesus says, Come in, my child, he says. I've been waiting for you. He looks at you and says, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he says to you, Come with me to a quiet place and get some rest. In the corner of the cabin, you notice a bed made of willow wood and two fluffy pillows leaning against the headboard crafted of bent willow branches. As Jesus in a rocking chair, next to the warmth of a fire, he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. You begin to drift off to sleep under the watchful eye of Jesus, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace. Jesus repeats those words as found in John 15 56. Remember, my child, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. The fruit that Jesus speaks of is simply evidence of your relationship with Him. Fast asleep now, in this little cabin in the woods, you realize you've not known this place of peace before. You become more comfortable in your bed as the candle flickers across the room. Jesus continues to pray for you as he sits in his handmade rocking chair. As you drift further into a land of dreams, do you see the vineyard just outside the cabin? You hadn't noticed it on your journey to the cabin, as there is a thick wall of darkness. But now you see miles and miles of grapevines. Each plant is loaded with grapes. Imagine the growth you see in your life as the fullness of Christ's resurrection fuels and nurtures such growth. Imagine the fruitfulness that you would like to see and know that God supports you in pursuing it. Jesus continues to watch over you as you drift into a deep sleep. Abide in Jesus now. Rest in God's grace. The rhythm of your breathing gets deeper and deeper. Abide in Him and He will abide in you. 
as Philippians 1 6 says, He who began a good work in you will complete it. Father, as I come to the end of another very busy day, I praise and thank you for the gift of sleep and the wonderful way that the nighttime hours seem to sweep away all my cares and melt away all my worries as I rest in you. Thank you that I may confidently cast all our cares and concerns upon you and lay all of our burdens down at your feet, knowing that you love me with a perfect love and care for me with fatherly concern. Keep me safe this night from any perils and dangers. Enlighten the darkness of this night with your perfect peace, your gracious tranquility, and your serene grace. Protect me through the hours of darkness. Thank you that you are my shield and protection, my rock of salvation and my hope and strength. Hold me close, Lord Jesus. I pray that I may sleep securely, knowing that you are by my bed every moment of the night. Thank you. That moment by moment, I am kept in your love. Amen. Rest in the truth of God's Word. As you abide in Christ, remember Proverbs 3.24. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Continue to sleep, knowing, abide in Him, and Jesus will abide in you.